<laughs> Hello everyone, Carrington here from Open Heart Games. We are back with our playthrough of the Tyranny of Dragons, one of the first modules put out for Dungeons and Dragons, 5th edition. Uh, and it is one of my favorites, one that I've played through several times and I very much enjoy. A um, couple of announcements. We have an upcoming event on April 24th. That is a Sunday. It's going to be at 1 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, and it will be our next GM one-on-one. -on -one. Join me, uh, Carrington Hess, as I will be hosting uh, David Blue Went, uh, and he will be and I will be discussing superhero-powered RPGs uh, on Sunday, April 24th at 1. Definitely don't miss it. It will be. Uh, a lot of fun, and I'm sure we'll have a great talk. We always have a really good uh, chat um, whenever we do these GM one-on-ones, and I'm very happy with those. So come in with your questions, uh, chime in, and and all of that good stuff. Um, also, we'll be doing more of the one-shots. Uh, definitely keep an eye on our events calendar and on our Facebook page, uh, which is Open Heart Games. Um, and you can always check out our website as well. We're continuing to do more blogging. If you if you enjoy the content that you see here on Twitch, definitely check out our blog. Um, there we go, uh, which I can which I can drop in the chat here. Uh, so yeah, that that is all of the uh, the cool stuff. Also, we are two likes away from having 200 uh, uh, fans on Facebook. So if you'd like to be the uh, 199th and the 200th uh, friend on Facebook, we would love to have you. Um, but that's what I got. So anyways. Uh, those are all of my, all of my, uh, my show notes. So, uh, on with the show. Let's go ahead and introduce our colorful cast of characters, uh, starting with, uh, with, of course, Baylor. Well, hello, everyone. This is Jabrillopad in chat. Uh, I pilot Baylor, uh, a massive Goliath with, uh, just all kinds of skill and no brain cells. Uh, I'm looking forward to tonight. Very good. All that strength and all that heart, right? Yeah, no yeah, 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 yeah. No, negative, negative one intelligence and zero wisdom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big dumb. All right, and next up we have Mordok. Hi, I'm Dave. I'm playing Mordok, our Azamar protector cleric guy that is still allegedly never heals the party. I don't get it, but that's okay. <laughs> No, you see, the party doesn't get it. Healing that is. Healing that is. I was true. fighting every fiber in my body. That's okay. No, that's okay. You guys will be begging me for healing. And I'll be like, nope, I'm not going to be begging you for anything. We, 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 are, we, already, we already beg you for healing. <laughs> Allegedly, I, says Hinohari in chat. Yes. I mean, I'm... I am a grave clerk, so that's my job. You know, graves. Let me let me uh, escort you to the other side. Have you got yes. friends on the other side? Yeah, I have, I have my, some friends. My, you know, yeah. they get you know, get some beer, wine, cheese. No, there it's all you good. go. Yeah, which by the way, uh, under underappreciated uh, Disney movie. Uh, uh, um, yes, hundred percent. Yep, uh, Princess and the Frog. If you not check. Yeah, show. one, one hundred percent. And uh, speaking of frogs, uh, on to our druid, uh, Patron. <laughs> uh, hello, everyone. I am Brad, also known as Hiohari in chat, and I will be playing Patron Purpleheart, our uh, druid uh, slash one level of cleric, because someone had to heal the party, allegedly. <laughs> Spicy. Excellent. Uh, and, of course, last but certainly not least, Zed. What's up, everyone? Uh, BGX makes here in chat, and I play Zed. Uh, if you've been here a few times, he's a lovable little cobalt monk uh, who's taken away a descendant dragon. And uh, yeah, he's cute. He's uh, too cute for his own good. All right, excellent. And we and we have a NPC that you can introduce, Carrington. Oh, I need to introduce. Ah, uh, yes. Sure. Ah yes, we have a new NPC. Uh, a, picture, a picture is worth a thousand words. Uh, you're 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 correct. Uh, they are definitely adorable. We we love our, our new NPC. I like it. Um, so we have a uh, uh, a new a new NPC, which I will now share an image of as we go to the um, here monks rule. 
<laughs> Excellent. Um, so, uh, as Mordok said, a picture's worth a thousand words. Here's the newest member of our party. Uh, this is uh, Valdis, the uh, the new um, the newest member of the party, um, and a, an adorable little uh, black dragon wormling. Uh, as the party was uh, has has spent the better half of on the road raising this dragon egg, and now it is hatched, and now it is a um, it is a wormling. Now, curiosity, how big is a hatchling? In 5e. Thank you, Google. Dragon hatchlings. They're pretty small. About a, so, newly hatched to about a month old during this time. They're voracious and they eat everything in their path. Well, that's good. That's good, good to know. Um... I would say that it's probably like, I mean, it's 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 probably at this time it's probably like small small to medium. I have it statted as a wormling, um, but I mean it's probably like what probably fifty pounds. So I mean it's still pretty big. Size of a mid-sized dog. Yeah, it's about that size. So anyway, yeah, that's the that's our that's our party. Still bigger than Zed. Yep, Zed could ride this wow. into battle. Yeah, well, we still have another tagger on. Yeah, we do. Our other NPC. Hopefully, yeah, hopefully uh, yeah, she's not real friendly. Hopefully, uh, <laughs> our other NPC will eat her. Uh, the other NPC in question is uh, is Jamna Gleamsilver, uh, which, let's see if I have, a, uh, I have a picture of her. Aha, handout. There's Jamna. Jamna Gleamsilver, who is a a gnome and appears to be some kind of a a roguish uh type a roguish person uh of of dubious uh, alignment so that is that is what we've got um so the party uh who would like to take a crack at, at our what happened last time oh i'll give it a shot i love it so let's see the time before last we left is our the cask keg that we had the dragon again started to break uh so we started last week with that same scene of Gemina, who's our our roguish probably not ally saying hey your cask is leaking and then of course it tipped over and broke and out comes Valdish uh at the same time that the you know of course making all sorts of noise and not knowing what's going on and then the owner of this outpost to uh, starts knocking on the door saying hey what's going on in there you guys making a lot of noise and Baylor said oh basically uh you know, it was like candy gram is you know candy gram for uh, <laughs> candy gram for mongo <laughs> it was candy gram for mongo uh, <laughs> that he wasn't he wasn't he wasn't decent and he couldn't come in uh and somehow we bluffed our way out of that uh, it turns out this guy was uh, on my hit list of people because he was responsible for murdering my family so we'll get back to that in a second uh, after we use the candy game from mongo trick uh <laughs> and i keep thinking of the bugs bunny cartoon uh <laughs> yep uh, uh baylor goes down to the bar and unfortunately wants some drinks but he forgot that they cost money because money's kind of a foreign concept for him because well it involves counting. Uh, sorry. He so ain't wrong. Of... <laughs> <laughs> Is he wrong? So one of the uh, one of the cultists that we were on the road with for seven years uh, decided that he would buy him a drink, and that developed into a wasn't a very friendly interaction, and that developed into a one-on-one -on -one ballroom brawl. That we kind of stood by the wayside, except for Atron, who decided who the owner of this establishment came up to him and challenged him to a, hey, if you're gonna have a 
If you're gonna have a ballroom ball, we have to drink and pull out his special dwarven ale. And uh, the owner of the proprietor failed a couple con checks and uh, stumbled back to his room trashed. In the meantime, Baylor finishes off Cultus. I go stalk the now intoxicated and inebriated guy that's on my hit list. And uh, we had two single one on one combats with CR whatevers, and we both easily handled them. So now my guy's dead, and the cultist is dead, and we got the keys to the place, and we discovered a secret room. We got a potion of extra healing. We had a bunch of dozen or so wizard men that we lit up pretty quick that the dragon is now munching on because he's eating voraciously and we found a trap door that goes into a tunnel that I assume we're going to go down and I think that's everything I think that is everything what did I miss did he, any, did he miss anything some, some, some bonding between Baylor and the dragon some bonding between Zed and the uh, dragon that and the dragon, some non-bonding between Gemna and the dragon. Uh, you know, I bo so. I bonded with a barroom full of cultists. Yeah, that's true. That's right. Patron bought the as a distraction. <laughs> brought bought the entire bar, multiple rounds of drinks, so that we could sneak both ourselves and the dragon through the bar area, not through the bar itself, to get over to where all the loot is. So. Though Petron wasn't involved in any combat, he was exceedingly instrumental in our success. Oh, and I'm boy. wondering why in, the, in Roll20 there's a GM roll of 5D100. Because uh, when we were in the supply room, we found the treasure. Some of ah, the that's right. That okay. Was, yes. uh, that's right. It, it, yes, take that damage. <laughs> yeah, take that damage. Okay. All right, new character. Gotcha. Yeah, got it. Okay, wait. There's spillover damage. New character dead. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yep. Eight, eight characters later. Yeah. <laughs> Several characters later. Yep. I have had... So I, so here on the stream, we obviously tell, you know, a couple of, you know, tell some fun anecdotes and stories and whatnot and pepper it with some with some ideas and, 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 and GM tips and all of that. Um, so I did have... A character one time where uh, a player came into a new session, dropped in to to the to the party. Uh, this was when I was when I was running uh, games at the Malt of Meeple, and uh, <laughs> he came in, walked straight up to the BBG who they were not supposed to f talk, fight with, or interact with. Basically, the the big bad evil guy was just supposed supposed to be scary, tell them uh, to leave, and then they were supposed to go to the next room, and that was it. Um, what happened instead is this guy goes, well, clearly he's evil, so I gotta kill him, throws a hand axe at him, combat began, I hit, crit, and killed the guy, and the rest of the party was like, nope, close the door, and I think his name was, like, Rufio or something like that, and so he named him, so he was just like, alright, or, you know, he's like, alright, well, this is, uh, this is, this is Crufio, this is his twin brother who's looking for what happened here and just like literally just added two letters on and we just continued play <laughs> it's just like you know what sure that's fine <laughs> you came here you came here for for a good time not a long time <laughs> it was like two minutes in i wasn't gonna make him sit through the entire session so sometimes it's just sometimes you have to suspend some disbelief and just be like all right let's let's get back to the fun and not have one person just sit there and watch the entire time I too enjoy scratching the name off of my character sheet and writing the new one, <laughs> which you did in one of the campaigns we did off screen. Yep. Twice. Wasn't that uh, Strahd? It was like, just how no, many times just... could I die? <laughs> no, just once. Well, you were on Rogue number three. Yeah, I, I, well, well, I was guy. on character. No I was on character number three, but there was a difference between. Uh, character number one and character number two, mm -hmm. but between two and three, no, it was literally just a name change. The entire everything else about the character was the it's same. The same. Um, there except, was except you, be, you became undying and then ended up ruling Barovia, which was other than, yep, other than, which yeah. was the perfect dark gift. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, so uh, yeah, just honestly, my biggest tip from that and biggest takeaway is try and focus on the fun. Um, focus on the fun, focus on the fun, focus on the fun. 
Um, you know, and if it, if that takes like, you know, some DM Fiat or some Deus Machina, um, I have when I was first learning to run, I did have an instance where like I was like, oh, it doesn't make sense to bring them in now. It doesn't bring them in to make. It doesn't make sense to bring them in now, and by the time I found the perfect time to bring them in, uh the session was almost over and they only got to play for an hour, which wasn't fun for them. They got to kind of watch around and see what happened, but like that was not an enjoyable experience for that player because, you know, everyone else got to have three hours of fun and they only got to have one. Um, so if you have to find a way that's not perfect, but you can explain it and you can be like, all right, let's, let's get this player into the story. Let's get them engaged. Uh, one of the things I used to do is kind of a joke when I was introduced to new players and I was running for like kind of a, ro a revolving door of new players is I would be like, all right, cool. The party's walking through. A blue phone box appears. It opens up. Two characters get kicked out. The 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 phone box closes. It vanishes. Introduce yourselves. And then we would just move on with the story. Like, <laughs> there doesn't always have to be that whole, like, you know, the, the, it's kind of a joke, but, like, D&D &D characters, like, who is this person that I've just met for the first time in my life in this strange place I've never been before? I have no idea, but I trust them completely. Like, you know. <laughs> so there's so there's TARDISes in Doc, in a D and D? if there have to be, you know. I okay. mean it can be it can be whatever it is. Like it doesn't have to be like that on the nose. But introducing the character to the party as quickly as possible, like getting them into the action is I think more, the most important part. So that way you're not just, you know, sitting there trying to, you know, explain the story. You have, you know, let's say you had six players and you have five out of the six having a great time interacting getting to play their characters and whatnot and you have one player that literally cannot do anything because they're not able to engage in the story because they're not even there yet and they because they're new to the group already um most likely they don't know when they can cut in or anything like that and it's the it is the responsibility of the game master to make sure that, that player gets engaged and gets in as quickly as possible anyways i feel like that's enough distraction speaking of just look at distraction um so the, uh, the the player's last session completed set, uh, chapter five, uh, and I do want to since we since we digressed a minute ago, I'm going to digress a little bit further uh, and talk a little bit about chapter six. Chapter six is called Castle, and I have no idea how to pronounce it, so I'm probably going to get it wrong. Uh, Castle Neartar. Um, it is an interesting chapter because. Uh, and we're, I'm going to do a lot more with this next session. There's going to be a little bit of getting there. But it is a very interesting uh, chapter because it goes into a ton of detail. I mean, so detailed about what is happening in this castle. And there are factions. And there's stuff going on. And there's people that matter. And they have objectives. And they have feelings. And... There's like there are, there are things that the players can do to interact with all of these things, um, but nearly every time that I've run it, all of this has gone incredibly unappreciated, and then the party just murder hobos their way through the castle and don't think anything of it. But I mean, there are like there's probably seven pages of lore based on like what happened to the castle, how it got there, why it's there, what's going on, who the factions are, who the faction leaders are, why they matter, what their objectives are, what they're trying to do. And it's all just nothing. Like, no idea what's happening. So what I'm probably going to do in the next session to, to prepare my players when you actually get closer to the castle is I'm going to have a few scenes like we did previously in the... Um, and I'm announcing this. Uh, I definitely could do it more theatrically, but... Um, uh, it's have a couple of scenes where these factions are actually going to be acting out behind the scenes. And I really like to be able to do stuff like this where you can have... A no, you can have the players just pure role play the villains so they can see them because there's a lot of stuff that happens off screen in a lot of D D modules especially early D D modules and i think it's just kind of written for the game master so they have some fun story stuff but um but the players don't ever get to know how cool this is unless the game master either gives them a lot of clues and they're able to put together the pieces or just tells them or these players then after playing the game read through the module but none of those are ideal so having a chance for the players to play as the game as those gives them a chance to also step outside their comfort zone try some different things you know try to have some fun pure role play ideas and 
and, and go from there. And understand when they're actually, you know, still murder hoboing their way through the castle, uh, they get to understand why these people are doing or acting the way that they are. So, with that being said, um, I'm, I'm kind of offended that you think we're just murder hobos. I didn't say that you were going to this time, <laughs> but in the past, there have been groups that I have played with that have murdered. The, I mean, like I said, it's this really well written, cool location. I really like Castle Neartar, uh, and the, my players really did too. After I explained to the, my previous players, really liked the location too. After I explained to them the lore and all the stuff that's going on. I mean, and it looks really cool, too. Let me see if I can... I think there is. Yeah. No. It's a good-looking... It was a good-looking handout. Here's a handout for it. I don't care how many men, women, and babies I have to kill to get peace. <laughs> that Easy, John Cena. Hobo. Yep. Oh, wait. I have something for that. There we go. Ba, ba, da, ba. <laughs> Castle near far. Yep. Castle near far? I mean, that's what Zed's going with. That's the name. Ah. Uh. Oh, yeah. So, there it is. Uh, and like I said, it's a cool-looking location. It's got great art. Um, it's actually got... Let me see. So, normally, like, a, a location has, like, one map. Um, this this particular location, we're going to be in there for a little bit. It has actually five maps and five layers. Like, it's a big location. And there's a lot of stuff going on. And like I said, I just, I just feel like... There's so much cool stuff happening. There has to be a better way to express that to to the players. Um, so, so five maps of murder hoboing. <laughs> yep. Um, there's there's also a uh, there's also uh, a, a another faction outside hanging out that uh, has nothing to do with the the rest of everything and uh, and there and and is never meant like they're mentioned in passing in the module and then they just never exist again um, but there are some uh ways to bring that faction in but i'm going to keep that faction a secret for now maybe we will uh maybe we will we'll encounter them later but yes allegedly all right so <laughs> i like the fact that allegedly is now a command in twitch all right so here we are uh we're back ready to start so the so the party has found um this uh, has found, has found, all right, um, the party has found in the lowest level of this, um, in this, uh, in this, in this roadhouse, um, uh, that... Sorry, it looks like I'm having some, some technical difficulties. Anyways, um, so in the lowest layer of this of this roadhouse, they have found that there is a uh, um, uh, a trapdoor that is leading to this tunnel going out into the Mare of Dead Men, which is this massive swamp uh, that they are going to now have to explore and figure out where the treasure is going. Um, yeah. I bet, based on the name of the chapter, you can figure out where it's probably going. But the players, the, the characters at this time, do not know where it is. Uh, so, with that, um, oh, I, I did forget one important thing that that when I the the five D one hundred that I saw roll that. Uh, What's our dragon's name again? Vardis? Mm -hmm. Valdis? What is it? Valdis, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Valdis, Valdis. Yep. Uh, He now has a horde. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. He has a very small horde, but he has a horde. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She has a horde. She does. All right. I'm back. <laughs> All right. Um, what happened? Wait, what happened with the stream? Because it's not up for me. Uh, do I need to do something else? Uh, it's, it's running just, for me, it looks like. It looks like you're offline. For me. Oh, it's yeah, a... Arpulis it, oh. is... Arpulis is asking if the stream died. Oh. Hi, hey, Carrington. Are we back? Oh, there it hey, goes. We're All right, we're back. Oh, yeah, I had an ad pop up, so we should be good. All right, sorry about that. I had a disconnection from OBS. There wouldn't, you know, uh, it wouldn't be a live stream without a few deck... Uh, without a few technical difficulties. Where did I lose everyone? 
I'll let our Pulis answer that one. Is there anything anyone missed? Uh, I probably missed the last like two, three minutes because Discord decided that, and it, it looks like Patron's in the same boat. Discord just like stopped working. <laughs>
as you step outside of, of Karnath Roadhouse, uh, you can see before you that there is just this... Um, I'll pull it back to the Sword Coast map. Um, there is uh, this, this area here, which is the Mayor of Dead Men, um, right here. And it ex it extends all the way to the Sea of Swords, but it's this this wetland, this this mucky area, um, that you ha will have to traverse. Okay. So as you are looking down um, this this tunnel, you can see outside uh, there is a. There are some some deep footprints um, that that you can see that they have been like carrying this this uh, these like heavy crates or whatever um, through the swamp. Uh, refresh me. The who, they who the the lizard folk you can assume. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yep. So I, there it, ain't it much I can do until we start hitting stuff. So yep. So it emerges into a spot that's nearby, screened with trees and brush. Um, you can hear some them some some people murmuring in, in draconic, and the trail leads to the um, to the uh, to the to the mayor of dead men, um, and you can see that there's a mix of swamp denizens. Uh, that that are, are wandering into this uh, into the uh, into the mare. Um, um, given given the fact that we can all speak or speak draconic, uh, can we hear exactly what they're murmuring? Uh, they are murmuring something about like mm, those dragon kneelers. They're all talk and no work, no lift. <laughs> No help. And then they begin like carting these really heavy crates off into the into the darkness. Can can I just pause for a second to compliment you on the You're welcome. <laughs> for real. I, I, like that was good. Well thank you. I appreciate it. I was trying to do fun voices. Uh, okay, so if I remember correctly, I cast Pass Without a Trace to get us down there, yep. and I'm assuming the battle we had lasted fairly fast, so we should still have some time with that, shouldn't we? Mm -hmm. All right, so if that's the case, then I think we should follow stealthily behind them and find out where they're going. All right, excellent. Um... So as uh, you're, yes, I would agree. As you are following behind, or following behind them, um, you can see that like they are kind of following through a through a a confusing maze um, that just seems to be, uh, and it seems like pretty quickly you lose them because they just seem to know where to step. And as you're trying to keep your distance and continue to be stealthy, I need someone to make me a wisdom survival check. One person. One person can make this check because they are the person I, leading the party. I got it. All right. Unless somebody could beat a plus seven. No, no. Survival. Now, if you How do you have a plus seven? Trained. Trained. Oh, okay. Big That's fair. I mean, I have a plus seven in perception and insight, so. Well, well this will be fun. All right, so as that you you, so you lose your... I, this is, I'm going to have a lot of fun with this. So no, as... Sure. As you lose your way uh, in this, you're trying to find your you're trying to find your way back and figure out how is it that these peop that these that these lizard folk, um, who and who you kind of view as rather primitive because they use like bone weapons and like tortoise shell shields and things like that and all these natural things, you kind of see them as like perhaps they're primitive, but maybe they're smarter than 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 they than they you know kind of kind of give on. Um, because they seem to be able to very easily find their trail, whereas you've suddenly lost it. I need someone to roll me a d12. Uh, I can get you. D12. 
I rolled an eleven. I, I like, rolled a six. I like, I like the uh, um, I like the 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 D twelve. Big big fan of that. A little weird, but okay. <laughs> All right. Um. So. <laughs> So suddenly you can you can see that you know in you know as you're as you're going along that there are there there are lights. In like the in the in, in in the mare, yeah. In the swamp. Like torchlight. Yeah, that sounds a little sus. Do I see anything more than lights? With a twenty, uh, they they sudden the the lights suddenly darken. Say, huh? Mm hmm. What type of light did it look like? Torchlight or what? Uh, it looked like maybe a, a torch or perhaps a lantern. Um. Can well, I? Good. Go ahead. Uh, can I CYA and do a perception check for like a um, ambush or something along those lines? Sure. Okay. I have advantage on those if I'm not mistaken. Let me check to be sure, but like pretty sure I do. CYA is you. cover your assets, right? Yes, yes, exactly. I the the clothes that I wear, which is all I have, is cover your very... accessories. Yes. Um so you have advantage on Wait a minute. Nope. Sorry. I don't that one at least doesn't matter. Yeah, I lied. I don't have advantage, so I'll just like Roll a plus zero perception check. Eleven. Alright, you you're not sure exactly what these are. They're strange. Hmm. Interesting. Well, they're not will wisps, which I was afraid of. Alright. Can I uh stealth and get a little bit closer? to where the light was. Like how far off would you say the light was? Um, let's see here. If I had to guess, I'm going to move these here. I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to go to grab the party real quick and and move the party. Oops. Sure, 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 sure. What's the odds Patrick's going to be able to see? Fingers listen, crossed. Listen here, all right? Why don't we leave the sneaky stuff to the sneaky characters and not the Goliath? I mean, so everyone's got plus I have right a now, plus so four everybody. in stealth, In, in the very you early days of Open Heart Games, when I was just starting off and I had a group of beta testers, which they later turned into the stream team. Um, <laughs> uh, surprise, how, surprising how that works. Um, there was a day when everyone got real spicy with me because I was like, let's fix the tokens. The dark vision isn't working. Um, so, uh, see if you refresh, um, roll 20, if it'll connect you to the next map. I'm on I'm the on next, next map. map. Okay, now we're good. Uh, and, and a lot of, a lot of memes were shared about although, me. Although Zed know. seems to be gone. Uh, no I'm Zed's having... here. <clears throat> I'm having some internet issues. Neat. Um, so where, uh, how far off again did you say that light was? Let me draw a line. Uh, okay. Say, say, okay. Say like, we'll say aha, perfect. Um. I'm gonna say that it's over in this corner, in this right hand corner. Down here? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so, go ahead. So down here. 
Uh, down in this area, that's where it is. I didn't see, okay, absolutely. Um, is that an accurate representation of how many feet it is, or is this yes, kind of kind of uh, off scaled? Mm -hmm. This is correct. okay. So, first things first, summon uh, summon axe. Second thing, stealth. Sixteen plus ten. Uh, twenty six. Uh, the problem with that being that if I leave the range of pass without a trace, I lose so, that plus so 10 and just, back down to a 16. Just, it's just 16 right now. Uh, yes, uh, be, basically because as soon as I step out of range, I lose pass without a trace. Correct. Um, and then I would like to, if it was like right here, I would like to skirt this way. And then here and like try to hide behind the boulder and stuff as I get a little closer. Okay. Go ahead and make me another stealth check. As okay. You move down into this area. What? As you move down into this area. Oh, okay. Are these squares supposed to represent uh, 10 feet Carrington or more? Five feet. Five feet. So pass without a trace is range is 30 feet, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. How long does it last? An hour. I'm going to so. say it's been more than an hour. Okay. Because you've now if got I... you've you've managed to get yourself lost by this point. Okay. Do I need to move so basically... the encounter up so it's easier for you to for you to see, Josh? I need uh, I need to be able to connect it to Roll Twenty's server in order to uh, <laughs> uh, in order to display everything. There we go. All right. So Baylor's here. It's, it's good for about five minutes and then it goes away. So. So Baylor's Baylor's is here, moving towards the whatever the light is. No, that's where I wanted to finish right there, so that I could peek over or around the boulder and. Okay. See make, if I see anything. Make me a uh, perception check. Sure, why not? Okay. Some rocks, a river. Yep. Yeah, there's a little. There's a little light right here. Okay. Um. Let me see what I have in my little bag of tricks. Interesting. 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 Yeah, I got nothing. That's what I do. Being that I know there's a light there, I'm going to hang out for a minute and see if I notice anything happen and just, you know, kind of watch a little bit. You can hear a sound, actually. Ah, uh, what sound do I hear? All right, you can hear whispers on the wind. Like the song or? <laughs> no. No candle okay. in the wind. Uh, uh, dust can, in the wind. Dust in the wind. You can hear like so whispers. Is, is this is this light like hovering? Yeah. Uh, now he definitely hears whispers in the wind playing. Oh, oh, good. Oops. Is this light like on the ground? Is it above the ground? Is it? Uh, there, it's like it's like bit. it seems to be like right behind these rocks, where the torch is. Um, I'm basically out of stuff that I can do without just charging over and making a bunch of noise, folks. Is everyone again? What was that? Hmm? Did 
Did we lose you? Maybe. All right. Do you want to try and charge over? No, I'm not dumb. Wait, that's off brand. <laughs> uh, what I will do instead is just stand up and walk back to the group out in plain sight. Okay. That's completely on brand. Oh, so I didn't see anything. Uh, so it's all the way behind those rocks is what you said, Carrington? Uh, it is. Yeah, right over here. Wow. My d d Beyond is not letting let me click anything. <laughs> Man, we were just having a great, a great night. Technology's the best, isn't it? I, I think all the internet in our area has gone to crap. Uh, yeah. What the cuss okay. is going on? That's kind of what I'm concluding. We had storms today. And if there's high wind, we also have some issues with that as well. Uh, the first one would have been what I would be trying to use. I don't know why I rolled twice. You're fine. Um, so I guess uh, 13 to perceive anything over there, and I'm assuming that's a no. You don't see anything. You just see that there's some light coming from over in this direction. Seems to move around. Little ball of light. Uh, I'm a hold on. How many feet is thaumaturgy actually? That's thirty feet. Uh, all right. Uh, from the other side of that log to my uh, left, I will um, make the sound of uh like voices of people whispering behind that uh, see what happens hey carrington yeah i'm going to use this ability Uh, there are, in fact, undead over in this area. Oh, I was right. Oh, there goes Josh again. He's gone. <laughs> I'm, he I'm here. I'm just having to refresh because our internet's garbage. <clears throat> we, may, we, may have a, we may have a short stream tonight. <laughs> uh, yeah, or we might need to take a quick break and change camera people. I know Jabril knows how to do it. Sure. All right. Cool. But it's server. The servers are the internet is absolutely just not working over here. Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah, we did have some pretty rough storms. And the internet must got just stuck in stuck in all the tubes. Like so. I can't even. I can't. I can't even go to our internet provider to see if we have an outage. Yeah. Because the, the website times out. <laughs> that sounds right. It checks out. Um. Yeah, let's go ahead and um, we're going to take a little bit longer of a break than normal. We're going to take a 15-minute break. We're going to get everything. We're going to try to get everything squared out. And uh, then we're going to um, we're come back and everything will be better, hopefully, with our playthrough. We've had some technical difficulties, and I'm happy to announce that this was all part of an elaborate early April Fool's Day joke. Did they buy it? I wish that was true. Did they buy it? However, <laughs> the joke is played on us. <laughs> the joke, yeah, the joke is played by us. Uh, thank you. Insert, ins, insert. What is it? Cox down here. Uh, Cox Internet. Thanks for that. I won't make my joke about our hometown internet. Oh well, here we are. Uh, but anyway, oh, while while we were doing our break and after we got everything uh, kind of figured out, I uh, I saw there's been announced, uh, and I know I'm a little bit late to this, but. There's a new D&D uh, &D miniatures skirmish game that's coming out uh, called Dungeons & Dragons Onslaught. 
uh, which looks kind of cool. Um, one of the things that's kind of neat about it is apparently there are initially two factions, the Zentarum, which are like a band of mercenaries and the Black Network and that kind of thing, and then the Harpers, which are another. So kind of two secret society factions kind of going on, so that's kind of neat. Um, from what I've heard, uh, I've, so I've heard that you are able to, there's something about, like, competitive dungeon delving in this that I had heard, and I'm not sure how that's gonna work, but it sounds cool. Um, so, who knows? We'll see. I know that there's been a lot of D&D miniatures games in the background, and, and it might be worth it just to get the miniatures, because, I mean, Dungeons & Dragons miniatures usually... Painted or on are usually pretty sweet. So, anyways, there's your ta-da news. We do news here now too. Um, so let's uh, let's try this out. We're gonna we're gonna go over here, and uh, I'm gonna try to make this new this new thing work real quick. All right, and here we go. Let us see if my camera work is any good. All right, there it is, kind of. Is that because my screen's half and half? It might be. See if you can make it bigger. Oop. Yeah, let's do that. Can you can you pull in the uh, the thing? I mean, that'll work. Yeah, if you can pull in the uh, in the bar that has the text on it, that's perfect. Say when. Uh, there. Oh, keep going. Sorry, can't see. Couldn't see anything. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. A little bit more. A hair more. One more. Let's call that good. All right, perfect. All right, so that will have all the information on there. The eyes of the grave. So when last we met. Night mode. Oh, can you turn off night mode? Oh. Uh, Makes it hard to read. Did it work? Uh, uh, it should be just like on the left hand side. It's it's actually left top left side of your screen, right there, right. Nope, down just a little bit, right there. Boom. All right, and then you should go back to the other thing. Thank you, thank you, Arpulus. All right, so when last we met our when last we left our heroes, um. They had just discovered that there is some kind of undead thing over here. You know the location of any undead. There are, there are in fact, uh, three undead over here. And that's one of the things I actually want to mention. I was watching a really good YouTube video the other day uh, about, like, uh, about Dungeons and Dragons because this is super my hobby and I uh, get pretty deep into it. Uh, but it was by Ginny D, who is a uh, YouTube content creator, and makes some really good stuff. Um, they have she's, a she's awesome. She is a very good. Uh, she's a she offers really good advice. Um, yeah. I actually referenced her in one of my blog posts when I was talking about um, like etiquette for uh, running online games. She is the one who has the basis. I think she has. She's definitely yes. Plus one for for Ginny D Arpulus. Um, highly recommend if you've not checked out her um, her her thing, and it's actually I you can check check it out on my blog, and I'll, I'll put a link in. in, in yeah, uh, and she she does some pretty good cosplay yep, stuff. And, yep, absolutely. You know, pink, pink hair, blue hair, you yep. know, whatever. But she <laughs> she does great videos for sure. Yeah, her but her content's really good, uh, and her content on like online etiquette is really well thought out, and it really is a great baseline. For the conversations that anyone, I will say this, anyone who is running games online and playing games online should watch those videos and show them to your players and then talk about it before you run your first session. It's about 15 minutes, but it's really good information. How do you handle problems when this happens? When do you ha when this happens? When two people trying to talk over one another? How do you handle the situations? Great stuff. Definitely, definitely check it out. Um, but uh, yeah, I was running. I was watching one about that, and it's let your players do cool stuff, such as this. I could have been like, "Oh, they're all hiding behind rocks," but Mordok has a really cool ability, and it came in clutch just now because that is a really neat thing, and it's very flavorful for his character to be able to see that these 
wispy things are these you can see that you can sense as you as you kind of like you know you, as you as you breathe in your eyes glow and you can see the outline of these of of these of these almost like almost like the rest of the um the swamp fades away and there's just this this darkness over across the way um almost like there's there's like three black holes where there should be life throughout the swamp there is instead just Void. Ah, Willow, what do we do? Well, they're what I think they are out of character. Character, you're evil. Uh, um, Arpula says, I just watched a video, that video before running the final boss in our fight with our water dean campaign last night, and it helped me totally change my plan for the better. It helped people shine instead of thwarting their best abilities. Absolutely. Um, I will say one caveat is characters absolutely agree. 100% agree with, 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 with Jenny D on that. Items, on the other hand, um, I gave a character an oath bow, but with caveats. Um, I gave it from his patron, um, and the patron just happens to be the big bad of the campaign. And I said the oath bow is him making an oath to that to that patron. So anyone that she views as an enemy, the oath bow works fine. But if he attacks her ally, it does not work. He still gets all of his other class abilities and everything, but that one powerful item for that specific instance doesn't work the way he wants it to. And also, she knows about it. She knows if she, if he's working against her. Because, I mean, if you give someone a Holy Avenger and they're under level 10 or 12, like, you know, and you need to, like, kind of reel them back in, uh, that that might be a, a way that you need to do that. Otherwise, you'll be, you know, if you give someone a Sun Sword too early, like, throw a lightsaber. Yeah, the, 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 the Oath Bow, bane of my existence. But it got less broken once they got higher level. I, I think that's true. A lot of, a lot of, um, uh, a lot of, uh, magical items are that way. So, I got a sun sword in one campaign. <laughs> it's it's a really good magical item. Yeah, I really want one. Yeah, they're they're pretty good. Yeah, we we had we had one once. <laughs> um, I got it in the I mean, curse of part Strahd. Is the, yeah, the best part is that the undead enemies always have disadvantage. That's the best part. Yep. Uh. I, I love the fact that I got a staff that I kept forgetting about and hardly ever used. <laughs> mm. So Arpulus has a very interesting take. He says, I hand out all the best D&D fabled weapons. That's why we play D&D. I agree, but for the sake of that, I'm pretty stingy when it comes to magical items. Um, mostly because it depends. Weapons, I'm all here for it. Or sorry. Uh, Non-weapons, I'm all here for it. Weapons, I'm a little leery because when you give a player a wand of fireballs uh, too early, you've essentially given that player uh, like five more spell slots that they did not have previously. And then it's just too easy for them to be like, pew, 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 pew. All right, you know, fire, like crack open the door, fireball the room close the door, open the door, fireball the room, and then that just becomes their default. So, But as far as things like immovable rod, um, dust of drying, things of, like, weird stuff like that, um, I'm always interested oh, to you, see... Hang on. I'm always interested give, to see would, what interesting us, things players will do with them. Hold on. You wouldn't you give, us give us dust of drying. Dust drying. <laughs> so you wanted it. <laughs> and you said, oh, no, that's lame. <laughs> I did say that lame, and I thought you'd give you something else. Anyways, but yeah, I mean... Give us a smoke jar. Yeah, that's fun. Smoke jars are fine. Um, but uh, I agree. I'm my own worst enemy by handing out willy-nilly. I can't help myself. Definitely lets me ramp up the difficulty without feeling bad. I usually use the uh, magical item tables, and I'll, I'll do, like, A is super safe. B is also really safe. It's when you get into, like... I like H I and J like those magical items are when you start getting into like anything that has a legendary tag 
Um, I actually, in a couple of my campaigns, yeah, H&Is, that's where you give all your stuff away, oh no. <laughs> uh, I actually, like, I will give away, um, I'll give away, like, uh, magical items. Um, I'll actually ask my players and say, like, what do you want in this campaign? And I'll, I'll have them make me, like, a give me, like, the top thing you want for your class that, you know, you think would be really cool. And as long as it is a common, uncommon, or rare item within reason, I'll find a way to work it into the campaign. So that way, instead of giving out, like, whatever it is, I'll, I'll try and do that. So I invite this party to go ahead and do that. Like, if there's things that you want, like, oh, you know, yeah. go ahead and I'll, I'll do this for you. I'm going to create a new item. Uh, or create a new a, a new thing. So right now we have um, we have our party resources, and then also under party loot, I'm gonna make a new a new handout, and the handout is going to be called. I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, edit the handout. And I'm gonna make it called wish list. Is it the wish list um, for Blinsky? Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, <Blinsky's laughs> yeah. Wish list. Yes, please. Uh, I'm gonna I'm uh, gonna put it in all of your journals, and it can be edited by everyone. Go ahead and drop in here. Uh, what what it is you know at, you can do this during the stream after the stream whatever but only one person can be uh, uh, can be editing at a time um, put in your character name and then what what item that you'd be interested in getting you know item or items beginning by the end of the campaign this is a good way for game masters to do this so um, uh, I actually have a, a take on this Carrington sure. from rank 4e so like 4e uh, items were a huge part of that game yep. like they were a part of the power level and i carry over that sentiment of when people like like people like getting fantasy weapons and fantasy items so personally whenever i run and gm a campaign i like to ask people what cool things they would like to see and try and find items like that and try and fit them into their character uh, i also like the idea of uh items that level up with you so you don't have to hand out yep. multiple items, but you can hand out like a cool talking sword that like eventually just becomes a plus three sword with maybe flame tongue or something on it. So I think that there's this is a very interesting thing you said. I want to I want to touch on what RPL said, and I think at this point we're probably gonna go we're probably gonna end the stream a little bit early since we're having technical difficulties. I know right now at this very moment we're not, but we've had like three drops and I'm I'm not trusting it. So we'll probably just come back next week with more Castle Nairtar stuff. But I want to touch on what, what Arpula said. Uh, Arpula says, I like Sly Flourish's thing of relics. Powerful items that work once and they're done. Uh, I really like this. I, I, I can't say for a fact, but I believe uh, he uh, was highly influenced by um, the uh, Numenera system. Because Numenera has like artifacts which, are, which like work all the time. And then ciphers. And ciphers are like a... a like, you have you have a you have boots that will allow you to levitate thirty feet in the air uh, for ten minutes, and then once you've used it, they break and you can no longer use them again. I like those really really well. And if you're looking for more magical items and want to add more magical items, um, the way that Arpulos is suggesting here with doing a one shot item, um, this is one of the reasons why Necklace of Fireballs is a really good magical item, uh, especially at like level five or whatever. You are giving them extra spell slots, but they have to burn those resources and then can no longer use them again so that is really good um on the topic of of what uh, of what what patron what hitahari was saying a moment ago um i really really like um the uh i really really like uh the idea of taking items and letting them level up and hitahari's right one of the things that you can do is you can be if if a player wanted something like i'm going to pull up the the stats on it, a holy avenger Holy Avenger. Um, so Holy Avenger uh, is a plus three to attack and damage rolls. And then when you hit a fiend or undead with it, the creature takes 2d10 radiant damage. While you hold this drawn sword, it creates an aura of 10 foot, 10 foot radius around you. You and all creatures that are in the aura have advantage on strength saving throws against spells and other magical effects. If you have 17 levels in Paladin, the radius increases from 10 feet to 30 feet. So it basically gives you an additional aura. What I would do if, if a player... Wanted, if a player said to me, I want to have a Holy Avenger, I would say, all right, well, it's really strong, and this campaign is only going to go up to whatever level it is. And then I might scale it. I might say, okay, from levels 1 to 5, it's going to be a plus 1 weapon. And 
and and that's and maybe it also uh, when you draw the sword, it's going to create a light spell. So it's going to give them something more than just a plus one weapon. And then from say like six to ten, it's going to be a plus two to attack and damage. And then maybe you add in the the you know the the plus two d ten to to radiant damage. And then from levels you know fifteen to twenty, then you can let it be the entire weapon. But you but you can take weapons that are powerful like this or like staff of the war mage or whatever it is you know and you can say like it you know you can you can break it down as long as you're you know communicating with your with your player and being and saying like it's going to level up into it and it becomes their character's weapon and it and it really like you know grows with them it's one of the things that they do in uh, critical role and a lot of the like the wild uh, adventures guide to wildemont and um and in the new campaign called another deep um they have uh, um items that level up with the characters that is something that takes a lot of work, and I hope that in the future we see more of that. Uh, as because we we still do not have a magical item compendium, uh, we do have the D Dungeon Master's Guide, but I do hope that they do that in the future. So that's where that there's my opinion on that. So so there. Agreed. There's actually so there's an article. It's it's old. I have it probably saved on my computer, but it was released uh, when D and D and Four E was still releasing the uh, the weekly like articles on the website with like uh, stuff provided by people who write for D and D and everything. They had an entire section on intelligent magical items, mm -hmm. and it's still probably today. I, I think it was translated into one of the book forms too still probably today one of my favorite books like little chapters about magical items because it like tells you about like making personalities and like rolling mm -hmm. up stats and like figuring all the things out and it was really cool i also like from critical role and i'm going to spoil the end of critical role so if you're if you're watching the vox oh, machina whoa, whoa. oh if you're not watching it oh okay you're oh, watching. I, I thought you I were getting ready to great. ruin the most recent episode. No, of... absolutely not. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna I'm, I, that's why. That's why I said spoilers for uh, Legend of Vox Machina. Um, you, if people have had several months to watch it, so you know, pause the video now. Months, I'm years. Gonna do, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna hold up my hands, and and as long as I have my hands up, uh, you can mute the video. Um, but at the end of Critical Role, um, Percy, this entire time with the pepper box has had this cursed item that has given him an incredible amount of strength. And that is a great way to bring in a powerful magical item and give it a downside. And at the very end, then they have to fight against this incredibly powerful, maybe fight against their friend who they're trying to then save. Like that is a great way to have a, an incredibly powerful magical item, have it in the campaign and give it a downside. Yes, cursed items are great. Um, obviously you just wanna make sure that you don't give them a downside. So there, no more, no more spoilers, no more spoilers, all gone. So you can unmute now, um, but yes, uh, uh, good stuff. If you've not, and also players who lean into curses, yes. If you have not watched The Legend of Vox Machina, I highly recommend it. It's great. It's good stuff. Uh, I will forewarn, uh, there's the mature content. Mature content, mature content. Um, anyways, so. Um, but, uh, yeah, so we had a nice little, ch little, uh, little chat about... Um, about some things, and so, like I said, since uh, unfortunately we're having some internet difficulties and con connectivity issues, um, let's go ahead and uh, take it. Oh, I thought of you. <laughs> Our Peel says, I thought of you when I watched it and yelled language at the TV. Yes, there is some language in a lot of things. Um, so, uh, before we go, thank you so much for watching, those of you who tuned in tonight. Uh, sorry we are going to end a little bit early tonight, um, and uh, but have a great, uh, a great rest of your week. Uh, if you enjoy the content that we do here at Open Heart Games, um, uh, definitely check out our website, openheartgames.com, our Instagram, uh, and our Twitch channel. We also have a YouTube channel where soon, soon, I assure you, uh, we will have all of the, uh, the backdated episodes. I have them all recorded. I just need to go through them, uh, and update all the descriptions and set them live. So you'll be able to watch all of those backdated episodes if you wish, uh, to catch up on our campaign, um, Tyranny of Dragons. Uh, also, um, definitely, uh, you know, Give us all the all the uh, the likes and the follows on Twitch, and you can also right here you can we uh, give a portion of each month sales directly to our local Extra Life um, Children's Miracle Network Hospital, which is Carillion Children's here in Roanoke, Virginia. Uh, so, if you'd like, you can also 
Um, so you can also uh, go ahead and donate to there. So uh, with that, thank you all so much for watching and have a great one.